We bless your name, Lord. We praise you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God is our strength and power. He makes our way perfect. Jesus took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. Therefore, I refuse to allow sickness to dominate my body. The life of God flows within me, bringing healing to every fiber of my being. Matthew 8, 17. The life of 1 Peter 2, 24 is a reality in my flesh, restoring every cell of my body. Today, I present my body to God, for it is the temple of the living God. God dwells in me, and his life permeates my spirit, soul, and body, so that I am filled with the fullness of God daily. Today, I present my body to God, for it is the temple of the living God. God dwells in me, and his spirit permeates my spirit, soul, and body, so that I am filled with the fullness of God. Romans 12, 1 to 2, John 14, 20. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I make a demand on my body to release the right chemicals. My body is in perfect chemical balance. In Jesus' name, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. God spoke and broke the cedars in Lebanon. And today, Father, we just want to thank you right now. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. We thank you for your word, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word is life. Your word is power. And in your word, we live and move and we have our being. And because of your word, we walk in victory. Therefore, we decree and declare today, whatever we do today would bring honor and glory to our name. We decree the word of God that says a thousand may fall at our sides and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh us. We thank you as our children go out to school today. Father, they are covered by your blood. No evil will befall them. No plague would come near their dwelling because you have given your angels charge over them. And we thank you as our children go out today. We thank you that they have a love for learning. We thank you for the things that may be difficult in their classrooms, Father. You will make it easy for them. I thank you, Father, that our children have the mind of Christ. Therefore, they are of quick understanding. They would understand every material that they read today. Everything that would be taught to them, they would understand it clearly. And I thank you, Father, that they have a great memory. They would remember everything that they would be taught today and everything that they would read today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I pray for those who may be having um, situations, uh, fighting um, any medical conditions, or those who may be fighting uh, mental issues, Father. We know that there is that there's nothing that you cannot take care of. There is nothing that is incurable through the blood of Jesus. And we're thanking you, Father, for the healing of the mind. Healing of the mind. We call the mind under the, uh, in control under the blood of Jesus. Jesus took the stripes and his back for healing. Therefore, anyone that is fighting mental illness, we bring that mental illness under the blood of Jesus. Every tormenting spirit, anyone hearing these voices, Lord, I thank you for touching their minds right now because by the blood of by the stripes of Jesus we were healed and so we call for healing to the mind restoration to that mind in the name of Jesus and we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise even as our children go out today father we thank you that they are covered by your blood. As adults go out today, Father, we are covered by your blood. And we decree and declare no evil will befall us, no plague come near our dwelling because God's angels are there looking over us. God has given his angels charge over us. So we give you praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you, Father, that we will, in everything we do today, we would acknowledge you, we would consult you, and we know that you will direct our paths. So we give you praise, honor, and glory. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, ladies all. Good morning. All those watching, Stephanie, Miss, and Michelle, good morning, and everyone else, we want to say good morning to you. God is good. 
And this is the day that God has made and we will all rejoice and be glad in it. We will step out today knowing regardless of what comes our way because we're children of the Most High God. He's already taking care of that situation. So regardless of what may come up, let us remember to confess the word of God over that situation. Our confession today for our children is taken from Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 from the New Living Translations. God's name is a strong fortress. I run to him and I am safe. Again, God's name is a strong fortress. I run to him and I am safe. What is a fortress? A fortress is a person or thing that will not be influenced or harmed by the outside influences or disturbances. A fortress is simply a safe place. So in God, there is safety. And so we call on the name of God, even in situations where we may feel afraid or you may be unsure, you don't know what to do. As you go out today, children, teenagers, remember God's name is where we can find security, where we can find comfort, where you can find peace. It's secure. So you call on the name of God for help. So again, the God's name is a strong fortress. It protects you from outer arm, from anything that may want to harm you. I run to him and I am safe. So the first thing we do when there's any danger, anytime we feel afraid, we call on the name of God. And the confession for us adults, adults today is found in 1 Corinthians 1.30. It's from the New Living Translation. God united me with Christ Jesus. Christ made me right with God. He also made me pure and holy and freed me from sin. Again, God united me with Jesus Christ. Christ made me right with God, pure and holy, and freed me from sin. When we accept Christ in our hearts, first of all, God united us with him. When we accept him in our hearts, he has made us right with God. We come back into right standing with God. Because remember, when Adam and Eve sinned, we man was separated from God. So we can, we can boldly say, I am in right standing with God. And because of Christ and because, of accepted, because I have accepted him, I stand pure and holy before God. And Christ has freed me from sin. Again, God united me with Christ Jesus. Christ made me right with God, pure and holy. And he freed me from sin. 1 Corinthians 1.30. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We, God is good. God is good. I, I am still, some of the confessions we did on Friday is still in my head. And I thank God. God's word is powerful. So I would encourage you, again, we're reading from God's Creative Power by Charles Copps. It's a powerful book. It speaks about the importance of confessing the right things, allowing the right things to come from our mouth. And so he's encouraging us to confess God's word. And one thing that he said that stands out with me since I, I read this book, like, was it six years ago? And I read it. This is my fourth time reading it. But one of the things that stood out the first time I read it and always sticks in my, my, my mind, when Charles Copps said he was preparing the word to share with with God's people and God said to him I told my people that they can have what they say but my people are saying what they have and this has been a this has been uh, this statement uh, it has been there to help me to control what I say quick example you may be in, in need of finances we do not say what we are lacking you do not say well i don't have money i'm poor i'm broke instead of saying what you have you say what you want to have lord i thank you your word says my god shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus and i thank you that my rent is paid the money for my rent comes in time so i told my people that they can have what they say but my people are saying what they have so let us be people who would say what we need Let's say it in the word. We would not confess the lack. We would not confess the sickness that we're fighting, but we would confess the word by his stripes. I am healed. I am healed from so and so. We confess the word. So powerful book. If you could, I would encourage you invest in it. It's powerful. Friday, the last time we, we had a recording, we met. 
I, I, there were some confessions, declarations that we made of our bodies concerning sicknesses and diseases in our lives. And we, we spoke to the organs of our bodies and the cells of our bodies. And I would encourage you to, 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 to go over it every day. Just listen to it. You may be rushing for work. You put it on in the morning. When you come home at night, you're lying in your bed. Put it on. Go over that recording. And I like it because Charles Capps has condensed, put everything together. We don't have to go searching the scriptures. He has it in here for us. All scripture based. It's called God's medicine. So even as you lie at night before you go to bed, turn it on and listen to it and, and confess these words because they're powerful. They're life-giving words. And as you confess those words, I'm telling you, you fight in sicknesses and diseases. You keep confessing that word. You take your medication, but you keep confessing the word of God and you will see a difference in your life so after after having confessed the word today we will be talking about we are at chapter 5 hallelujah and we're talking about understanding the principle what is the principle now that you have gone through the scriptural confessions let's look at the principle that could be the key to your to your being a partaker of God's provisions concerning your healing we confess now we said let's look at the principle okay there is probably no other subject as important to your healing and health than the principle of calling things that are not there's he said it's probably no other subject that is more important yes you have the symptoms of that sickness and that disease it's in your body you've been diagnosed with it but what he's saying calling things that are not it's there but we're calling for healing we're speaking to the cells we're speaking to the body to come in line we're calling things that are not there we're calling it into being calling things that are not we see in romans chapter 4 verse 17 to 22 that abraham became fully persuaded that god would do what he had promised the way he became fully persuaded that's Abraham, was by calling those things which were not manifested as though they were. Now verse 17, Romans 4, 17 says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. This is God talking to Abraham. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. So Abraham, God called him a father of many nations. At that time, Abraham had no children. He was not even yet promised a son. Let's continue. Here, Paul is referring to Genesis chapter 17. You will notice that God called Abraham the father of, na of nations before he had the promised child. And he taught Abraham to do the same so he had promised abram the child but before the child was born god confessed god said to him you are the father of many nations god god changed abraham's name abram's name to abraham which means father of nations or multitude this was the means he used to convince abraham to call for what he did not yet have in reality. God has established it by promise, but Abraham had to call it into reality by mixing faith with God's word. Again, God changed Abraham's name to Abraham, which means father of nations or multitude. This was the means he used to convince Abraham to call for what he did not yet have in reality he couldn't see it it was not there it was not there in the physical God had established it by promise God made a promise to him and we know God keeps his word right but Abraham had to call it into reality by mixing faith with God's word and so we have situations and you're gonna step out here and you're gonna mix your faith Lord based on your word you says you said in your word I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Therefore, my refrigerator is filled with what I need. Um, I have the money to pay my bills. There is no lack based on your word. So you're using the word of God with your faith. Every time he said, I am Abraham, he was calling things that were not yet manifest. Bless the Lord. Every time 
Abram said, I am Abraham. He was calling things that were not yet manifest. Abraham did not deny that he was old. He didn't go around saying, I'm not old because he was old. But he said, I am Abraham, meaning father of nations. This was God's method of helping him change his image. And it caused him to be fully persuaded. Let's see. I am persuaded. I am persuaded knowing God's word is true. God never lies. God never fails. His word stands for. So based on God's word, based on his promises, I am going to use the word to, to, to call forth what I need. He was persuaded. Let's be persuaded like Abraham. Paul also gives us insight into this principle in 1 Corinthians 1, 27 to 28. It reads, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised at God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Simply, the things that, that God, the things to men that are wise, it becomes foolish in the sight of God. And, and he said, God chose these things. He had, sorry, he chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The things that we may look at that are foolish, he chose those things to confound confound the wise that's to show us that you know we are not that wise as we think we are no matter how intelligent we may be our wisdom is nothing to be compared to god the base things of the world and the things that are despised that he chosen yea and the things which are not to bring to north things that are in other words god uses spiritual forces which are not which are not seen to nullify natural things that are seen. He used spiritual forces, hallelujah, which are not seen. Nobody could see the spiritual things and cannot see spiritual forces to nullify things that are seen, to, to, to just cancel things that are seen. This is, the, this is the Bible principle of calling things that are not as though they were. I like to use myself because that's, you know, I've gone through this as a testimony. I always remember when that time when I was fighting lupus and I said, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You know, someone who was a believer closed and they said, you know, because they look at me and I figured they probably felt sorry for me. I was drawing from the spiritual into the natural. Yes, I'm walking in pain. Yes, there were times I couldn't walk and I confess I'm healed. That individual said, why don't you just accept it? Because it's six years I fought. Why don't you just accept it? Because they got to the point where they figure it ain't going to work. You've been confessing all the time. But no, this is someone who has been confessing the word. Do not give up. I'm a living example. So the things in the spiritual, God uses spiritual forces which are not seen to nullify natural things which are seen. So we do not confess what we see in the natural. But we use God's word to confess the spiritual things over our situation. This is the Bible principle of calling things that are not as though that are not as though they were. In 2 Corinthians 4:13, Paul says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. So we believe the word of God, and we speak it forth with confidence, with boldness. Hallelujah. Paul is quoting David when he said, I believed and therefore I have spoken. In Psalm 118, 17, David said, I shall not die, hallelujah, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I love this verse. Let's say this together. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Again, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. When it comes to divine healing, this is a vital principle. We should declare to ourselves what God's word reveals about us regarding, regardless, sorry, of the circumstances or how we feel about them. Again, 
when it comes to divine healing this is a vital principle we should declare to ourselves what God's Word reveals about us regarding regardless of the circumstances or how we feel about them so regardless of what your body is telling you regardless of those pains in the joints you speak to those pains how pain you listen to me you get out of my body in the name of Jesus get out of my body by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed so regardless of how you feel regardless of your circumstances we it's important that we declare what the Word of God says in Romans 10 6 to 8 Paul says that the righteousness which is of faith says the word is nigh unto thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart the word is there it's near unto you so you use even in your mouth and in your heart the word is there notice the word is first in your mouth then in your heart God's word becomes engrafted into your heart as you speak it so it comes out of your mouth you don't only read it you speak it out it's engrafted into your heart as you speak it there is nothing more important to your faith than declaring what God has said about you with your own voice again there is nothing more important to your faith than declaring what God has said about you with your own voice giving voice to God's word is a method of calling for things that God has given by promise and are not yet manifest I read it again there is nothing more important to your faith than declaring what God has said about you with your own voice giving voice to God's word is a method of calling for things that God has given by promise and are not yet manifest so the word of God in the Bible these are his promises and so when we voice it when we say it it's calling those things into being it's calling it into being they're not yet manifest but we're saying it we know that it's gonna happen in Jesus name when you do this some would say that you are denying what exists yes I heard that why don't you just accept it how could you say you're not you're not sick how could you say you're ill look at you you're limping you're in pain that's crazy the truth is you, you you're in pain you're still sick don't confess you are healed and you'll hear all of those things but because we do we, we walk in Christ and, and we walk we, we the Bible said we rest not against flesh and blood but against principalities we are we walk in the spiritual realm we, we we operating in the spiritual realm so we do not accept what we see when you do this some would say that you are denying what exists but that's not true at all you are establishing what God has said to you to be true concerning healing even though it is not yet a reality in your body again some may say that you are denying what exists when you confess I'm healed when you confess my God shall supply all my needs but that's not true at all you are establishing say after me say when I confess the Word of God over my situations I am establishing what God has said to be true concerning every situation in my life concerning healing even though it is not yet a reality in my body you don't deny that sickness exists but you deny it's right to exist in your body I like that you don't yeah you don't deny that sickness exists it exists but as I say I always say I don't know I get it I say listen to me I call the pain by name whatever it is. you are illegal in my body I never invited you in my body my body is the temple of the living God therefore you will get out okay so here again you are not denying that sickness exists but you deny it's right to exist in your body take authority take authority let's say that I will take authority over any sickness that tries to attack my body that tries to attach itself to my body I take authority I use the Word of God and I tell that sickness to leave my body because it's illegal in my body I did not invite it in my body and my body is the temple of the Living God when we know who we are in Christ we speak that word yes sickness exists but hey you're not existing in my body oh no you're not 
regardless of what run through my family. Oh no, no, I am a part of the family of God. The blood of Christ runs through my veins. It's a new hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I love the word of God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm saying my brothers and sisters, I'm saying teenagers, children, the word of God is powerful. We're not denying sicknesses, but you just tell it, it has no right to exist in your body. Why? Because you are bought by the blood of Christ. You are bought by the blood. Jesus took the stripes on his back for, his, for your healing. He shed, the blood on, uh, he shed his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Therefore, you are a new creature in Christ. This is your inheritance. Healing is the children's bread. You belong to a new family, the family of God. The blood of Jesus Christ runs through your veins, burning up and getting rid of all this stuff that's in your body that is not of God. All that sickness, it has to go in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Mm. Because you have been redeemed from the curse. Okay. But you deny its right to exist in your body. Why? Because you have been redeemed from the curse of the law and delivered from the authority of darkness. Let's say this. I deny sickness the right to exist in my body because I have been redeemed from the curse of the law and delivered from the authority of darkness. Again, I deny sickness the right to exist in my body. Why? Because I have been redeemed from the curse of the law and delivered from the authority of darkness in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. That's found in Galatians 3.13, Colossians 1.13. Thank you, Jesus. God has also given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Let's say that God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Thank you, Jesus. These things belong to you. Second Peter 1, 3 and 4. When you are sick and confess that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus, you are calling from what God has already given you even though it is not yet manifest. Again, when you are sick and you confess you are healed by the stripes of Jesus, you are calling for what God has already given you, even though it is not yet manifest. Yes, the, the moment Jesus took those stripes on his back, healing is ours. Healing is yours. It's already been given to you. So you calling it in, you receiving it. So you don't you don't wait for it to be done. It's already yours. So you receive it by faith. Hallelujah. God, this is God's method of calling things that are not as though they were until they are. This is God's method of calling things that are not as though they were until they are. And this comes back to mind. I know I shared this with you last Thursday, but I'm going to say it again for those who may not know. I needed some money to give my nephew. He was being so good to me when I started. He's, he's, his thing is music. And when the Lord told me to get the songs that he gave me while I was sick, he said to get it on an album, get it on the CD, get it out there. I, I contacted my nephew. I said, I have a job for you. Yes, you're my nephew, but I want to pay you the way you would charge someone else. Give me your price. I'm not looking for a discount. It's a job. You need to be paid. I'm going to pay you. He said, Aunt Lois, no. And I said, I'm going to, and he insists not to take money from me. But I was still blessing from time to time with, you know, something. And I said to the Lord a week ago, a week and a half, yeah. I said, Lord, I'm going to meet my nephew next Wednesday. And I held up my checkbook. I said, I need to give him some money. And I'm not going to go meet him unless I have some money. Now, you are my father. You are my source. You are my boss. I work for you. So, I was leaving town, going to New York. I said, here is my checkbook. I'm packing up my checkbook. I'm expecting $500 to give my nephew. And I tell you, believe it not, the following day, I got a call. Oh, glory to God. I got, not the following day, a few days after, I got $600. Five to give to my nephew and a hundred to take care of the to help in paying for the songs that but if you listen to my testimony on thursday this is what i'm telling you god's word is awesome we call things into being we use the word my god shall supply so it says here mm, this is god's method of calling things that are not as though they were until until they are so we speak it until they are even when i got there i said lord i'm gonna write a check for him you know and so i was able to when i met him that day I was so happy to give him that money. Oh, God is good. So we use the, the God's word. We confess it. In other words, 
it say they deny what exists okay let me go for this again there are some who have misunderstood this principle the principle of calling into being what's not there he's saying some people have misunderstood this principle and they call things that are as though they are not in other words they deny what exists they deny what exists but there is no power in denying that sickness exists the power is in calling for healing and health by mixing faith with God's word he's saying some people say well I'm not sick I'm not sick he said okay there is sickness you as my pastor says when you see the symptoms in your body go to the doctor find out what it is and then you address that sickness and you call it by name and you tell it to get out your body for instance you got pain in your joints and you don't know what is this you go to the doctor they did the test oh you have arthritis okay thank you fat doctor so then you say arthritis in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave my body. Why? Because Jesus took the stripes and is back from my healing. So you know, you find out what it is, call it by name, tell it to get out of my body. So when you confess, I am healed, you are receiving what Jesus did for you on Calvary. Hallelujah. And let me just finish this last sentence. The there is no power in denying that sickness exists. The power is in calling for healing and health by mixing faith with God's word. If you are sick, you don't deny that you are sick. Yet, on the other hand, you don't want to always be confessing sickness. Yes, it's there, but you don't go around telling people, I'm sick, I'm sick. What I tell my children and what I try to do, if they need prayer, let's say something has come in anybody, I said, you just say to me, Mom, I am fighting a headache. I'm fighting a headache. I'm fighting pain in my back. Believe with me for healing from this pain. Do not come. Mom, I, I'm, I'm sick. I got this. I got no. We, we're not claiming it. That's, that's my way of doing it. Believe with me, Mom, for fighting. Believe with me for healing from this headache. Believe with me for healing from this back pain. I am fighting. We're not, we're not, we're not owning it. We're not saying, oh, I got this. This is my. We're not going to own it up. Yes, it exists, but we are confessing the Lord. We are fighting it. That's my way of putting it. If you are sick, you don't deny that you are sick. Yet, on the other hand, you don't want to always be confessing your sickness. I got diarrhea. I got arthritis. I got this. I got this. Do not say you have it. Do not keep confessing it. For that will establish your present circumstances to you. Do not always be confessing your sickness. For that will establish your present circumstance to you. Denying sickness won't make you well, but by mixing faith with God's word, you are calling for the promise of God to be manifest in your body. Again, denying sickness would not make you well. You just can't say, well, I'm not sick and do anything. No, what you have to do is, but by mixing faith with God's word, you are calling for the promise of God to be manifest in your body. This will cause you to be fully persuaded and healing is the result. There are some who would say you are lying if you confess that you are healed when you are sick. Yes, I hear that. They'll say you're lying. No, you are simply calling for healing that God has already provided, even though it is not yet manifest in your life. Again, there are some who would say to you, you are lying if you confess you are healed when you are sick. No, you are simply calling for healing that God has already provided, even though it is not yet manifest in your body. You call it in. What you are really doing is practicing God's medicine. I like that. You're practicing God's medicine. So if you do say, if you confess by the stripes I'm healed, and somebody says, oh, stop it. You're lying. It happened. You're still sick. You're there. Say, oh, no, I'm not lying. I am practicing God's medicine. And they may laugh at you, but you know what? You know what you're believing for? You, are you going to let someone step in the way? As I said the other day, the woman with the issue of blood, there were many obstacles in her way. There was that big crowd, but she pressed in. She said, listen, I'm getting healed. I'm tired of this sickness in my body. I spent all this money, so many years, so much money I've spent to all these doctors. Nobody could heal me. Nothing is stepping in my way today. She pressed against the crowd. So 
obstacles are going to come. The words of people are going to come. They're going to tell you, forget it. Oh, since your great-grandfather had this, it's something in a family. You can't help it. Everybody got family this and everybody got this. And all of these obstacles are being coming. You're going to hear these words. What would be your response? Are you going to listen to that? Are you, going to, are you going to yield to the obstacles in your life? When you are tempted to remember the woman with the, with the issue of blood, she did not. She said, listen, I'm getting healed today, regardless of what's in front of me. And she pressed through the crowd. She touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. And the Bible said she was made old. So today, my word, I want to encourage you. People may say, it's not the truth. Stop. Oh, you call yourself a Christian and you're lying? This is the truth. You're sick. You're sick. But you said, listen, I am practicing God's medicine. You are not trying to convince anyone, he said. You are not trying to convince anyone that you are not sick. You are simply proclaiming what God has said in his word to be a fact, regardless of your present condition. I like this. I'm going to say it again. You are not trying to convince anyone that you are not sick, but you are simply proclaiming what God has said in his word to be a fact, regardless of your present condition. The word says, by Jesus' is by whose stripes, which is Jesus' stripes, you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. It's already done. It's already done. We just have to receive it. Hallelujah. Notice it is past tense. As far as God is concerned, but not yet manifest in your body. It's already done. It's already done. It's just not yet manifest in your body. So don't give, don't give up. Don't don't let those 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 circumstances and those those um, obstacles come to prevent you. You hold on to the word of God. God God's words never fails. So Father, I thank you again for your word. I thank you for your people. I thank you, Father, that as we read your word and we confess your word, it's building our faith in you, and we would not stop confessing your word, regardless of how we feel, regardless of what the circumstances around us may appear to be. But we will trust in your word, knowing your word is life, your word is truth, and there is power and deliverance in your word. So we give you praise and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember, remember, do not listen to the voice of the enemy. Do not listen to what people may say, regardless of what you are going through. Stick to the word of God. Keep confessing the word of God, and he will bring you through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name, Father. We glorify your name, Father. We say thank you. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're going to go out with our song. And, and as even as you go out today, let's remember to give a compliment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To, to a teenager, a child, as you go today, give them a compliment. Let them know that someone cares. Because as I say, I always say, that compliment may save a life, may encourage, because that individual may be tormented by those voices that telling them they're no good, that God doesn't love them or nobody cares. But when we take the time to say a compliment in that individual, it will stop many times. It would stop the plans of the enemy or it would stop rebuke the lies of the enemy. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that song. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As I said, this is our team song. This is our team song, and we're we going to sing it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong thing. Oh, dearie. And oh. delivered me from all my fears. If God has delivered you today, I want Hallelujah. you to join me as we worship the Lord. In, in the, the beauty, beauty of holiness, for he's a miracle working God. Miracle working God. Miracle working God. Nothing is too difficult. He's a miracle working God. Miracle working God. Miracle working God, nothing is impossible, he's a miracle working God. Regardless of what you have, whatever need, God is going to fill that need. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I 
fear no evil, for God is with me. Amen. Hallelujah. See yourself by faith walking out of that situation. Whatever impossible situation, you know you cannot fix it. You know it's impossible. Remember, God is the God who specializes in that. And he will work your miracle for you. Miracle working God. Miracle working God. Nothing is too difficult. He's the miracle working God. Miracle working God. Yes, yes. Wonderful with impossible. He's the miracle working God. Again, do not let the time come against your belief or your stand for, for healing. God is an on-time God and keep pressing in. He's going to work it out in his time. I see yourself walking in that miracle. By faith, I receive. Lord, I receive your healing in my body. Whatever situation, I receive it from the soon. We're not true working, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's a miracle working God. Yes, he is. Nothing is impossible. Ooh, I love my Jesus. I love my God. Yeah, miracle working God. Yes, he is. Wonderful nothing. Nothing is too possible. He's a miracle working God. Oh, we glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus. Jesus, God is your miracle worker. Yes, I love this. My God specializes in the impossible. Yeah, bring your pain, bring your depression, and come to the miracle working God. Why you come to him? Because you're going to receive your miracle. Nothing is impossible. He's the miracle working God. Hallelujah. Yes, wonderful working God. He's the miracle working God. Hallelujah, miracle working God. Yes, he yes. Woo, wonderful working God. He's too difficult for my hallelujah, miracle working God. Yes, he yes. Woo, wonderful working God. Oh, he's the miracle working. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Nothing. Remember that nothing would ever come your way today. And it may be impossible, say, God, I put us in your hand because you specialize in the impossible. And I believe you for my miracle. I receive it today. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. God is good. So thank you for joining us all today. Go out today. Be blessed. Have no, you're blessed. You're already blessed, but just enjoy. I call for increased blessings in every area of your life. Enjoy this day. Regardless of what comes your way, you testify. I serve a miracle working God, the miracle working God. My God specializes in the impossible. Be blessed. Be blessed. You are loved by God, and God wants the best for you. Thank you for joining us. See you tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Take care. Bye.